I don't know if you can hear the wind blowing, but it's freezing cold. So let's go someplace. Oh, there we go. Look at that shrubbery blowing in the wind. Yes, it's cold outside. So let's go do something nice and warm. Ooh, down to the cellar we go. Yes, I say cellar because laid stone walls. Oh, what is that thing? Hey, that's the egg washer. I've uh, had this for a while. The furnace has always been down here keeping it warm, which is great when we're right here loading eggs into the washer because there's fire. Yeah, heat. Makes it wonderful down here instead of being outside. So the egg washer is an aqua magic. Uh, <laughs> that's the. This model is still being made by the, uh, I think, Na National Poultry Company out of Iowa, but this was originally manufactured like in Washington and has been rebranded after the buyout as a Santa Touch. This is a Model 5, it's the smallest model. Um, Back at the beginning of December, I got 500 new chickens. So I got eggs coming out my ears. And I've had this since May, but just hadn't had the time to get it down here. Um, so let's, let's show off uh, the washer running. And then we'll uh, do some explaining about the setup. Because everybody wants to see this guy run. I'll take the cover off just for showing purposes. But it is not recommended because the brushes aerosolize the water and whatever junk is on it. So we got our control panel. Hot water back there has been on for a while. I've actually ran it some today. The gauge is upside down and it's cooled down to 60 degrees, but it'll be up about 100 when it's running. So, fan, that's turning. Flip the other switch. We got water dripping out. And eggs going through. I can load up a dozen and a half eggs on the ramp, and that's all we'll watch for now. This is a lot to keep up with, because by the time they come out the end here, you'll have to load more, and it's just a, a race back and forth end to end. So there's our first clean ones coming out. Now it's another set of brushes on this end. This, they're a, a lighter bristle, but there's air blowing on them, and they should come out dry. We're waiting and waiting for them to come out of the darkness. In the meantime, we have the uh, small gear reduction motor that turns the conveyor chain real slow. The tensioning mechanism is here in the middle. There's a lovely catch tray for all the water. And I have a bucket uh, because the plumbing is hard in the basement. The house is plumbed for everything to be up above going down and we're below. Uh, or below the drainage system. So I gotta clean that bucket out. They're coming out mostly dry. They just get pushed off one by one and they roll right in. Ooh. That one needs a rerun. That one does too. Okay, we're gonna send three of them, four of them back through. If they don't make it the first time, we just redo it. Let's see, there we go. Oh yeah, water temperature is up to 100 degrees now. That's about the max I can get out of this water heater. I've got it opened up pretty far. Uh, this is a black backflow check valve. We've got the wash water gun. 
And on the back side, this is our flow control and a solenoid to shut it off. So when I shut the brushes off, the water will shut off. Hopefully we can see the, uh, the flow rate right there. Kind of see that little floater. Uh, we're getting close to eight gallons per hour, uh, which is plenty. And that makes it so I can, well, I can wash a lot of eggs before that bucket gets filled up. And as we see, it's just kind of trickling out right there. And here's those three we had to rewash. And this one's being a real toughie. So he's not coming clean. And I should have put it back here the first time. And that's my soap water. And that's for all these extra dirty eggs as such. Uh, I have these two five gallon buckets sitting here to hold the clean bucket. The drive motor for this mess is hiding back here. Of course, my soap water is catching the leak from this little hose, but it helps keep hot water in there. The eggs are cold uh, because the garage is cold. So yes, there's the drive motor. We run a lot of real special belts. These are small toothed belts. That belt there on the bottom has got a twist in it. And the brushes spin inwards towards each other. Let's see how quick I can keep up putting eggs on one by one. Now while I'm by myself, you know, I can only wash so many before I gotta come down here and put them into cartons. The tray at the end has enough room to hold uh, probably at least five dozen, if not more. Actually, I filled, I did these two trays in this already by myself, and those are 30 egg trays. So that's actually six dozen plus, and there was room on the tray still. Now, if there's, if you have two people, obviously someone's gonna be right here loading eggs. That's hard to keep up with. And the other person's down here catching and moving eggs away. Uh, other details, the egg washer is rated for 1,800 eggs per hour, but you gotta be on top of it and hopping. Uh, last night, me and dad, Ran 40 dozen through in, oh, in an hour. That's only 480 eggs. And so we shut it off. Yep, water flow stops. We shut the fan off. It's not too loud. We'll see the notched, notched belts right there, or the toothed belts. I think that's all the mechanics of this. Um, something new like this uh, would roughly cost I want to say don't even hold me to this but I would say it's well over ten thousand dollars for a brand new egg washer and they still make it so what's what what would go bad with this one uh, even being made in the 70s it's all very low impact you know you're not doing a lot of hard work on the eggs you still got all the parts I've got new brushes if I need them um, some of the electrical is original, some of it we did change up. Like this water heater is new. This is a small two and a half gallon water heater. Now we put it on the back side just so that it was fairly clean um, on the two human side. Um, we redid the wiring a little bit because um, everything was flipped. The old water heater was mounted right there and there and the electrical was on the other side. So we flipped it around and we had to move everything. I only had to replace a couple breakers. All the motors were good. The fan worked. I uh, just had to make it make it all connect. I was surprised even this shutoff solenoid worked. Even the flow control worked. I just had to replace the little screw-in guy there because the threads went bad. And I got lucky to find a bolt with the same threads. But now, now we're feeling big league in the egg business. You don't have to sit there and run them through my hands and get carpal tunnel. You're strapped in my head. Let's see how well we can do this. Got a quick load up the ramp here. I got the uh, extra dirty one soaking. A lot of this is just surface, I wanna say sandy material, um, but it's dry little pieces versus wet stuff like say their poop smeared on it or mud. So we got the ramp all loaded up. I should be sorting better, like picking some that are extra dirty. 
like that one down there waiting for us. And we'll get the conveyor started. Okay, there's our dozen and a half eggs. Then I have these ones down here waiting for me from last run. Try not to have the washer run too empty. And hopefully by the time those eggs start coming out, I've got this filled enough to then, uh, we'll say reload the ramp. We start a new stack. I got a box ready for whenever. But really, oh, there goes the last egg in. But it's hard. Oh, that one's definitely going to be too dirty. It's going to be hard to keep up with boxing the eggs at the end uh, because the eggs do go into the washer so fast. Let's see, I think I, I forgot where I was earlier because I was talking about the price on this guy. I got one steal of a deal. It was a lot of money. Um, it cost me like $2,500 for the egg washer and some parts and accessories. If you wanted to buy a new one, I think it'd be north of 10, 10 grand for this ex same exact model egg washer, except it's gonna be brand new and not 35 to 40 years old. But it's made of aluminum. The aluminum doesn't rust. Ooh, we'll see if that one gets clean. Now the aluminum may corrode a little bit, like we see happened right there, where it, especially where it touches iron. There was supposed to be an aluminum cover here, but I had to make my own out of uh, some Lexan. Uh, because the brushes, they do aerosolize, like they're, they're sending out water droplets. Okay, we got a small backup going, but the conveyor seems to be pushing them away okay. So we'll box a few of these up. Um, when the eggs are warmer, they'll come out drier. I'm using hot water, but putting them in coming out of the garage. I mean, the garage is uh, maybe 40 degrees. It's a good refrigerator right now with the weather we're having. Uh, that these haven't been through warm water first to soak most of these. Uh, so they're coming out cold and they're not drying as fast, but the good news is the cardboard helps wick any little bit of moisture away uh, left on them. And it's just a thin skim layer. There's nothing dripping off of them. Yes. Okay, let's see how quickly we can reload. We got a few out of the way. I hate when the washer runs empty. This is why I wish I had a hand, but everybody else is busy today. I don't feel like doing anything outside. Let's see, this washer, if it washes 1,800 eggs per hour, like how long would you expect to wash eggs per day? I mean, I'm trying to figure out how many hens this could support. Like this one egg washer, it could probably uh, wash eggs from, I would say, 5,000 hens, but you would also be washing eggs, oh, say four hours a day. So you're not running it all day. You spend half your day feeding and caring for the hens, then you spend four hours washing. However, you need two people to do the washing. Could you imagine 5,000 hens? Now I know there's, you know, these big commercial layer barns and they've got tens of thousands of hens per barn and they've got bigger washers and more people and they're just churning out eggs super fast. But we'll say starting out uh, as, a pul pul uh, as a pasture based situation, you know, 5,000 hens that out on grass is just a few. That's a lot to look after. They'll definitely keep your pasture cleaned up where you gotta keep them moving fast enough. Trust me, with free range hens, I've definitely learned uh, the big uh, draw, the big reason is the, uh, we'll say the relative ease of, main, of containing the chickens uh, in a barn. Especially when it's cold outside. The chickens are just loving the outdoor life. Now the coops are all winterized. Uh, but I know there's, they'd much rather be inside a, say a 50 degree barn than a frozen coop 
that has no drafts. Hey, the biggest thing with the chickens is keeping them out of the out of the wind. Oh, empty washer. That's not good. This will be a good one. There's some blood. It'll come out clean. This one's more mud than anything else. It looks worse than it actually is. Now when it's frozen cold in winter, the eggs usually come out of the boxes cleaner because the chicken's feet aren't all muddy when they're getting in the boxes. Okay, that knocking noise. I haven't figured that out yet. Something inside, and it's on this brush, when the eggs get down to about this point. I don't know if it's a brush problem or I need to check alignment of the bushings. They're just brass bushings, and I have vegetable oil. Yep, vegetable oil. It's food grade, right? You don't want to use a petroleum-based product. Vegetable oil is just soybean oil. And I dribble it on the bearings before we get started. And hopefully some of it works its way in. That one's kind of dirty. I don't know if you can see the thickness, but that was chicken poop. See, that's the joys of having your kids and your excrement come out the same exit of your body. Your future kids may be a little dirty. Hey, wouldn't it fun to be uh, be, chick be like chickens? Well, I mean, for the females of our species, that would be rough. You gotta ovulate something the size of your head every day, you push it out of your body. But then again, I guess you get to choose whether you wanna have kids or not. Like, whether you sit on the egg and incubate it. It's not all drawbacks to being a chicken. Of course, what do we do with all these eggs? Let's say, uh, <laughs> ovulating almost daily, right? Would we eat human eggs then? Or we'd be like chickens. There's some deep thought to get lost in to really play with your head. Okay, I need one more egg to finish out this tray. And at least the good thing is I can spend a lot more time putting eggs on until this bucket's empty. And I know the tray, the catch tray will have enough room. This is a little tight in this corner uh, because of the water tank there. But everything fits well enough. If anything, at some point I may move that tank. But we had to get the egg washer running because I had a backlog of eggs. That's a real dirty one. I mean, since, those new, the, since the new bullets started laying, uh, I've been getting, well, I got 500 new hens, and before it got cold, now they were good for uh, like at least 250 eggs a day. So that's over a case. A case is 180 eggs, six trays of 30. Plus the eggs from the old hens, and we were getting about a case from the old hens. Let's see how many of these soaked ones come out clean. So now we're getting two cases of eggs per day to wash by hand or more. Uh, that gets to be a lot. One case isn't too bad to keep up with, but we start doubling that. And you have to wash 360 eggs per day minimally. Uh, you get behind fast. So I've only got a week or two's worth of eggs to catch up on. But with the egg washer, if I uh, keep at it for an hour or two every day, uh, we'll, we'll get all the eggs caught up real fast. To the point that in regular season when I'm not behind on egg washing, you know, I can just wash eggs every other, well, not every other day. But I can wash eggs twice a week uh, when the egg pickup is, like the day before, and do it, I'll spend as much time doing setup and cleanup as I will washing. 
but we'll save wear and tear on our hands that way. Okay, now the dirty ones are coming through. Oh, well that one's not clean, that one's not clean, that one, oof. These were some really dirty eggs. Most likely eggs that were in the vicinity of an egg that broke. Because when you get dried egg, it'll really stick. So we're gonna put these to soak for a while longer and run them through on the next run. Well, this is just a look inside egg washing. I hopefully we covered everything. Uh, probably made the video nice and long for everybody who wanted to watch forever and ever and act like you're really in on the action. And for those of you who didn't watch this long, well, you didn't see this part, should have watched longer. So we'll catch you guys later with more fun farming action.